that there is a minhag for Sephardic people to call after the name, the first boy after the name of his father, and the second boy after the name of her father. That's the minhag of the Sephardim and the Chidushis, even though they are all alive. The father of the father and the father of the mother, they are alive. Still there is a minhag to call after the first boy after the father's father, and the second boy after the father of the mother. Now, you should know that this is not the Ashkenazi custom. The Ashkenazi, the Ashkenazim have a custom over here. Tzel Ashkenazim, lo na'agu liko shem atinot al shem zekenot. Kshe'odenu v'chayim. Whenever the grandfather is still alive, which is the grandfather of this baby, which is the father of the father or the father of the mother, they don't call it after the name of the grandfather. V'no'agim gam ken likot atinot tehila al shem avia isha. Ashkenazim also have the other way around. First, they call the first boy after the father of the mother. If he passed away. If he's alive, they don't call it after his name. They are afraid that they say, oh, listen, if I'm alive, you're going to call him after my name. It's like I'm already dead. So you're putting somebody instead of me already. So you're calling my death closer like this. They're afraid of these things. And therefore, because of that, they don't have such a custom. I saw a very interesting Kiddush. So what if a person's father, Lo Alenu, he is Mechalel Shabbat, married to Goya, Mechalel Yom Kippurim, eating Hazir Yom Kippur. What are you going to do right now? Now, his name is Abraham. And he's telling you, listen, you got yeah, a baby boy, you're calling after my name. You're diligent. It says Halakha over here. A person should not call a name for his child after Rasha. Because it says, Shem Resha'im. Irkad. It says the name of the Rashaim should Hasva Shalom be come rotten. It's a, <laughs> we don't want to wish it to them, but that's what they, they do to themselves, the Rashaim. But here, Rabotai, look how the Torah always finds a way to make Shalom with people. How important is for the Torah to find always the Shalom with people? It says the Alakha, the Aviv Shu Mechalel Shabbat, Mechalel Kola Torah Kula, Mevakesh Le Koro Al Shemo. But the father's name is also a name of other tzaddikim. For example, his name is Abraham. We have Abraham Avinu. We have big rabbis named Abraham. So even though you're going to put the name Abraham, and people are going to say, oh, you call it after your father's name, right? Huh? You can say, yes. But the emet in your mind, when you call it after the Abraham, you may no, not get in mind? Abraham, Abraham Avinu. Or another rabbi, the name is Abraham. Like this, you made shalom between your father and Akadosh Mako as well. He didn't make hamachloket between the two. If there is a way to make shalom, obviously, shalom is the best. But if something makes a, against the halakha, the person says, listen, Rabbi, in the synagogue, I would like to put the tehillim this way. <laughs> so for shalom, you have to agree. This way is going to be the tehillim. <laughs> this, 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 this way, you cannot. Another person will tell, listen, I want to put the sepulchre upside down. <laughs> That's the way it is. It has to be this way. You cannot do that. If there is a way to make a uh, fine middle ground, no, we said it. There is a way. But if there is no way, how can you flip the Torah and say, that's the way I want the Torah to be standing? It's a suit to do this way. So here there is a way out. It says Avadia, since there is a way out, have the name Abraham after your father's name, at the same time the name of Abraham, Abraham Avinu, Babu Hashem. Like this, you covered all the opinions. It says, not only that, that's another Hidush over here, says. It says that, what about the name Alexander? Did you know that Alexander? It's a hundred percent kosher name for the Jewish people. It says, Mutar liko b'shem Alexander. Sh'arei matzino b'shimon ha-tzadik sh'ohora l'bnei doro liko b'shem zeh l'kvod Alexander Mokton. There are some people named Alexander. Sometimes you ask, what's your Jewish name? This is the Jewish name. Alexander, it says the halakha, it's accepted Jewish name. You don't need to ask for another Jewish name. The fact that you don't have to say, are oh, you Alexander? So probably your Jewish name is Abraham. No, no, no. Alexander is a Jewish name. The Chachamim telling us, behalf of Shimon HaTzadik, it was one of Sharek Nestek Dola, he gave the kavod to Alexander Mokdon, that everybody that will be born, the children will be born, named after him. And from that time on in history, the Jewish name of Alexander was accepted among the Jewish people as well. The last thing I'm going to share for today, there's many interesting things I prepared, but there's not enough time. It says, not only that, it says, Mutar liko, this is an important thing. So what if a person, mother passed away, Lo Alenu, let's say her name is uh, Sigal. 
And the child that is born is a boy. Now he wanted to have a girl to name it after his mother, Lilu Nishmati's mother. But it came out a boy. Can I call him similar name after the mother's name, but in a, baby, in a, in a, in a male format? For example, let's call him Segal. Her name was Segal. This boy I'm going to call Segal, but the, in mind I'm having this boy should be named after no. the mother name. It's a boy who named after a female name. Is it okay or not to do? It says not good to do. It brings over here. Not only that, it says the other way around also. It says, let's say your father's name was Dan Daniel. Daniel. Now, he passed away. We all go. He went to Olam His name was Daniel. Now, this person had a girl. He wants to call. He wants to tell him a boy to call after the father's name. But he had a girl. Can he call the girl Daniela? Behalf of the father name that was called Daniel. Says our body over here. Misha Aviv Niftar, who shmo Daniel, venolda lo bat, verotzeli kol Hashem Aviv Daniela. Yesh omrim shenachon leimana mize. It's not good to give to a girl name that has to do with after a boy. Do you know? I told it to you. One of the shiurim. That whenever Yitzhak, Abraham, Yitzhak was born, it says Hashem told to Abraham, Be After Yitzhak, you're going to have your continuation. At the age of 37, Abraham was commanded by Hashem, He didn't get children yet. Abraham, you told Hashem, Hashem said Abraham, you, Abraham could have said to Hashem, Hashem. You told me from Yitzhak, my continuation will be, Yitzhak didn't get married yet. So how is he going to have my continuation if they didn't have children yet? You're telling me you're now slaughtering him. Says the Arizal Kadosh that God's promise was fulfilled through the Akedah. It says how? It says you should know, because Sarai Menu was coming from not a very kosher source, or from a source that people used to make prohibited things, they switched the Torah so, so to the neshama that Sarai giving birth to was switched. Instead of Yitzhak born with a male part of his neshama, he was born with a female part of his neshama. And a female nesh part of the neshama in a male's body cannot, con cannot uh, repropriate, cannot fulfill full work. So he says, in order for the promise that Hashem gave you that Yitzhak is going to be your continuation, he had to go through the Akedah. Comes out that whatever was make, did not make any sense to you, that's what will make God's promise to be fulfilled. The Arizal HaKadosh says that during the Akedah, the fear of Yitzchak got so high to the point his neshama left his body. And that's what we are saying in the, in the Slichot. Upahad Yitzchak Aleinu What Pahad Yitzchak? You don't say Pahad Abraham, you don't say Pahad Yaakov. Why say Pahad Yitzchak? He says Yitzchak was such a righteous man, such a tzaddik, that he was afraid not to be slaughtered in an unkosher way. He said, I have a tiny tire, so I will not move, so I will be 100% kosher, I should not be nevela. That's what he was afraid so much. His neshama is coming out, and Hashem says, in that marriage that you were so tzaddik, I'm switching right now. You're going to get down the neshama of the male part of you, and the neshama of the female part will call right now to Rivka. And that's at that same time, same year, Rivka is born. After three years, he's 40, she's three, they get married. And they have, after that, the continuation. So it comes out, it says the halakha over here, that if a person is going to have a male named after a female, Chas Vashon could have a bad future for that. That's why it's not a good idea to put, if your father's name is Daniel, and you want to have your daughter named after your father's name, Daniela, even though Daniela is a female name. But it's named after the father's name, it says it's not a good thing to do. Nachon Limana from this thing. Some so anytime, huh? Yeah? Some say Daniela is also bad. Because it's a because source, it's Daniel. Daniel. Was Daniel who's a, who's a man. That's also true. That's also true. But here, the, his main point is not to call it after the father name, that is 100% men, that he's Daniel, you want to call her Daniel. And like this, Rabotai, if a person is guided the right way, he's not disrespecting his father, he's not messing up the future of his kid, everything goes according to the plan of HaKadosh Baruch the best way possible. Like this, is so important for us to learn the halakha, so a person will know what's the right thing to do, and Be'ezat Hashem always be Matzliach. Amen, amen.